Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture Football. And I'm Andrew Pollard from What Culture Football. And we are here today with all of your football news. Kicking us off, Andrew, though, of course, it's the middle of, well, supposedly the middle of summer, not looking out my window, but that should lead to a huge amount of transfer speculation. And Chelsea, you're no stranger to that. Yeah, Chelsea, who've already made some very impressive signings ahead of the 2020-21 season. And it looks like they're, they're close to wrapping up, not one, not two, but three new signings. Um, one of which is finally the, the long gestating deal to, to get Kai Havertz over the line to Stamford Bridge. That seems like it is pretty much done. Uh, by all accounts, it's going to be a 100 million euros deal from Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, an initial 80 million euros up front, then with uh, 20, mil- oh, 20 million euros to follow. Uh, Kai Havertz, just one of the great, um, it, I don't know if it's even fair to label him a prospect. I was going to say one of the great prospects in world football, but he's already proved how mm. good he is at such a good age. He's still only 21. Uh, last season, bagged 18 goals from midfield for, for Leverkusen side that finished fifth. The season before that, he got 20 goals. Already a, an established German international. Um, and it's a five year agreement from Leverkusen. And I mean, if anybody knows attacking midfielders and goal scoring midfielders, it's Frank Lampard, I guess. Mm. So you, you've got him, that's a great signing. Um, slightly less money in terms of at least a fee. It looks like Thiago Silva, who we, we knew was going to be departing Paris Saint-Germain at the end of the season once the Champions League campaign was was uh, done and dusted. It looks like he's signing for Chelsea on a two-year deal, um, which uh, what we saw last week where I think um, Thiago Silva himself was maybe looking for a return to, to AC Milan. Mm. But that was going to be on a one-year deal and this is a two-year deal to go to uh, a country he's not played in before, a league he's not played in before. Um, and to, to you'd, you'd imagine to bring some stability and marshal that back line for Chelsea. Um, uh, and then the third signing, just Chelsea fans getting all tight in the pants at all these signings because it's, it is like Christmas. Um, the third signing, it looks like Malang Saar, who is uh, it's, it's, a, it's a weird situation. He's another free transfer, but this, mm. again, somebody that's been touted as one of the, the best young defenders in world football um, in, in terms of at least people look at him potentially in the next few years as, as stepping out and being a breakthrough talent. 21 years of age. Um, was playing for Nice last season uh, and his, his contract was up and he was off he popped and yeah this looks like uh, by all accounts I wrote down here I think it's uh, another five year deal that they're looking at for him which is that one subject to a medical Thiago Silva they just need to finalise the paperwork and, and Kai Havertz as well that's the case of everything's in place all the agreements are made it's just the case of signing the eyes, signing the eyes, dotting the eyes, and, <laughs> and crossing the T's and getting that deal uh, completed but big big times big news for Chelsea fans yeah, I think it's been a great, exciting transfer window if you're a Chelsea fan. Uh, no idea what they're going to do next season. This influx of talent that they've got, adding to an already you know sensational squad, of course. They just had all of their players that were out on loan brought in when that transfer ban came in. Now that's gone. It seems like the emphasis on development of youth from their own system is gone, but getting all the other talented, youthful players uh, into that squad is is happening. Uh, look, you may roll your eyes at someone like Thiago Silva coming to Chelsea because, you know, oh yeah, we're, we're this suddenly turned, you know, everyone's favourite second club because they're just developing their own, you know, prospects. And now, nope, they're bringing Thiago Silva in. But I think that could benefit some of the young defenders they've got in there. Who better to learn from than... Uh, a world-class defender like Thiago Silva. Look, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not he can keep pace with something like the Premier League. Um, It's a real change of scenery from PSG, for example. Um, But I like these signings. I'm intrigued to see how this is going to affect Chelsea's squad and their goings now. We've seen all these comings. Yeah, yeah. I think the Thiago Silva one, while people might think, well, this is a guy who he's he's 35, he turns 36 next month and they're offering him a two-year deal um, and he's... Uh, how would you adapt with the, the pace of the Premier League? People are going to have those doubts, but I think I think it's an excellent signing just because looking at that Chelsea team, while last season was about, they, they, well, they, they had their hand force, but they had to give so many uh, younger players, Mason Mount, uh, 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 Tamori, um, Tammy Abraham, they got games because nobody could come in. Um, and so while in one way, I hope, I, I mean, I'd like to think Frank Lampard um, would still when possible, uh, allow his young players, if they're good enough, give them that opportunity and, and showcase. We saw Billy Gilmore towards the end of the season as well, who looks like a, a right prospect. Mm. But I think one thing you can maybe say that Chelsea team missed last season was some sort of leadership, particularly at the back. Um, and I think Thiago Silva just ticks so many of the right boxes, a free transfer, 
Uh, I'm not sure on the exact figures, but he's going to get a very good wage himself. That's that's part, part of Barcelona that happens when you get free transfer and when you've got such a pedigree. A, a defender who the legendary Franco Baresi said that he is the, the most similar to Franco Baresi he's ever seen, and that's I applaud it. Um, but I think it's great, and and it, they might not even be finished. They brought in Hakim Ziyech already, Timo Werner already. These three players now look like they're all about to sign, and there's still those rumblings that yeah, they just go out and get Jan Oblak for a hundred million. <laughs> Saying and, and people were saying that maybe Roman Abramovich was getting a bit bored and that he was uh, holding back the funds. And I, I think this is a big statement of intent from Roman, uh, and especially if he can bring you some more players. But then on the flip side of that, there's going to be the pressure on Frank Lampard of, well, if you've got a squad that's had this much money invested in it now that, that on paper looks like it should be challenging for the title, then you've got to be challenging for the, for the title. Absolutely. And uh, early tip now, I think Havertz is going to be the difference maker in fantasy football for me. Just to, just to, just got a feeling about that. I'm already eyeing up my fantasy football squad for next season. Uh, let's talk next about the Harry, Harry Maguire situation. We've covered it a lot, of course, recently. Uh, he was uh, arrested over in Mykonos uh, as a result of what he's been now been charged with uh, aggravated assault and attempted bribery of a police officer. Uh, that happened whilst he was on holiday with family and friends on the Greek island of Mykonos. Um, there'd been an altercation there's a huge amount of speculation which we're not going to comment on really uh, as to the cause of this uh, exchange um, and the issues obviously with the, the officer who tried to break up this fight now I've been practicing this Zanis Paniotokolopoulos 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 a lawyer in Mykonos <laughs> said uh, that the charges uh, Harry Maguire faces are all misdemeanors, not the serious felony charges. So he's unlikely to face any jail time if he is found guilty of these charges he's faced with. Uh, not the sort of thing Man United needed in this closed season. Certainly not the sort of thing Harry Maguire needed. Um, hopefully something that everyone can move on from soon enough. It strikes me that this is just going to be all kind of swept under the rug in the next few weeks. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's one of those where it's a big story now. It's been a big story the last few days, but I, I think you've nailed it there where give it a couple of weeks' time and this will just be, oh, yeah, I forgot Harry Maguire had that, that, uh, that uh, tussle in in, uh, in in Greece. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not a great look for him. It's not a great look for, for Manchester United, but especially with him being their captain. Um, and it's it's just, uh, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, we can't really go into too much details, I guess, because a lot of it's alleged. But just, it just seems like, I don't know, the, one of those things that may or may not happen now and again when you get drunk in a bar um, and, and when you've got this celebrity that, that comes with it, I guess, a celebrity status where a lot of the times you're going to be a target, unfortunately. Um, but it's, there was a, instantly, there was a lot of Man United fans I saw on Twitter of, that's it, stripping of the captaincy, we don't want him at our club. And you're thinking, well, one, at least wait for all the facts to come out first, mm -hmm. see how it plays out before making that instant snap judgment. And two, this is, uh, they're the same fans who idolise a Roy Keane or idolise an Eric Cantona. And, and Eric Cantona is one of my favourite footballers of all time. And Roy Keane is just a phenomenal footballer and, and comedy goal to watch on the TV whenever he's on the thing. <laughs> but these are two players that had very murky pasts at times and, and had some, uh, had run-ins with the law. And, and But these players are idolised. So I think the Harry Maguire situation, I think United fans need to just, let's see how all the facts play out fully. Um, but... I think, like I said, I think it's one of those situations where it's a big story now, but in a few weeks, um, barring any major um, I don't know, new information coming to light, I think this is one that will just be mildly forgot about. And, and then you kind of, now and again, you'll be like, yeah, you're just like, oh yeah, that did happen. I kind of forgot. Let's hope so, because it just strikes me that Aaron Guy isn't that sort of person, as you kind mm. of alluded to there. Yeah. Um, whether it be the crowd that he was with or just idiots trying to start something with him. Uh, hopefully this can be dealt with and, like you say, wait till all the facts come out. Um, yeah. I saw Luis Suarez's name was trending last night on Twitter. People arguing about who had a better individual season, who's the best player out of him and Robert Lewandowski. Uh, but it's going to be fascinating to see what happens with Suarez and Barcelona because it's all changed at Komen's Barcelona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's um, it's it's a crazy time at Barcelona, as we've detailed. <laughs> it feels like a, a constantly for the last <laughs> so since that Bayern Munich thrashing, humiliation, decimation, whatever word you want to throw at it. Um, and we've we've known that there's going to be changes from top to bottom. Um, we've seen Piqué Sentien sacked and replaced by Roman Gumin. We've seen um, Eric Abadal, the sporting director, removed from his position. Um, and we've heard so many rumblings about pretty much everybody apart from 
four players, um, maybe three, because Messi might want to waste them. Uh, but pretty much everybody is for sale, apart from three players, four players. Um, and one of those players that, that seemingly is available is, is Luis Suarez. Um, and that, that story's just been, well, that fact has been reiterated over the weekend where there's stories that Koeman has come out. And, uh, and basically there were four players who he rang and said, look, you're not in my plans for next season. One of those was Luis Suarez, and there was Samuel Lentiti, there was Arturo Vidal, and then there was even Rakitic. Um, and especially in the case of Rakitic and Suarez, they, they've pretty much been part of the furniture. Well, they both signed in 2014, so they've mm. been there for six six seasons, won a whole lot of trophies. Suarez has scored a whole lot of goals, the third <laughs> most in the club's history. Um, but yeah, it was apparently a, a one-minute phone call to what Human gave to Suarez. Uh, I mean, it's, Luis Suarez, he, he's not, um, not the most universally loved the footballers but i don't know uh, you're thinking that he probably deserves more than just that yeah Hi, Louis, it's ronald yeah don't get too familiar with me because you're not going to be seeing me for long <laughs> anyway um thanks for the service off you pop um bye uh, and that, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's that's it um but we we heard last week how suarez was maybe uh well ajax were maybe interested in bringing in Luis suarez um back there of course that was who he uh, who liverpool signed him from a scored a, a shed load of goals for ajax which is Arguably the, the team where he really made his name before taking it to a different level at Liverpool and then taking it to a, an even bigger level at Barcelona. Um, but yeah, Suarez seemingly is not keen himself, uh, has no interest in returning to uh, to Ajax, uh, to the Johan Cruyff Arena. Um, and it looks like he's not going to be short of, uh, of offers though, because there's, there's sort of uh, the clubs in France, in, in England, in Spain, uh, in the US have all shown interest. The only club that has been named though at this stage it's Paris Saint Germain, um, which uh, I, I, to, to be honest, I think Paris Saint Germain should be about well, being disrespectful to Luis Suarez. I think there's better options out there for them mm. because they're looking to, to bring in a, a big name. I mean, obviously, they've lost Edison Cavani uh, now this season. He's left on a free transfer at the end of the season, well, about a month ago, uh, you know. So they maybe are looking for reinforcements. They've got Icardi, um, they, they've got Neymar, they've got Mbappe, they've got Angel Maria. So they're not sure in, in the attacking third of the pitch. But you can understand why maybe they're looking for another out-and-out striker. Um, and I guess if Luis Suarez is talking, he might be available on a free transfer from, from Barcelona mm. because they just they won't rate that that much. I mean, realistically, at 33 years of age, if you were trying to demand a transfer fee for him, you're not going to be talking mega bucks in the modern market. But yeah, maybe maybe Paris Saint-Germain. I, who knows on this? Yeah, exactly. It's going to be fascinating to see where he goes next. Because, well, first of all, credit to you for being the professional journalist and not saying that Luis Suarez cut his teeth in uh, in the Dutch league with Ajax. Um, but yeah, uh, look, Paris Saint Germain is an obvious one. They've got boatloads of money. They just love attacking players. And like you say, despite the the attacking force that they've got, they'll probably look at that Champions League final and gone, oh, we need to score more goals in that. So let's get another yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, 198 goals in 283 uh, games since he joined Barcelona in 2014. Which, while it's it's so often we obviously Messi getting the headlines. Mm. That, that's the, that's well, like I said, he's the third highest scorer now, Luis Suarez in Barcelona's history. So it's not too shabby when you've got a, a when you've got Messi next to you as well. And and the, the amount of goals he's been involved in, whether it's scoring or assists, mm. was I, I can't remember the exact figure, but it was astronomical. It was, it was stupid. Um, obviously, yeah, well, any time I've seen him playing for Barcelona, it's certainly in like the Champions League. If he's not scoring the goals, he's certainly heavily involved. Not necessarily getting the assist, but doing the running that often doesn't get noticed. I, I've seen, obviously, not so much in that Bayern Munich defeat, but still. Um, look, for one, I would love to see him back in the Premier League. I was watching, as a result of him trending yesterday, the clips of him in that outrageous Norwich game where he just scored like four world-class goals in a single game. I'd love to see him back. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a sort of feeding frenzy. Weird that Barcelona may just completely cancel his contract, as I've been reading, like you say. Um, but who knows where he's going to end up. Let us know in the comments where you think he and the other uh, Barcelona big names could well end up. Maybe we'll do a, a whole separate podcast speculating on that in the next few days. But uh, continuing our talk uh, in La Liga, bad, bad news uh, about Malaga. Um, really, really sad this because when you think about how they've fallen uh, recently, uh, they released a statement uh, just yesterday uh, on Twitter uh, leading to a link to their website that basically said they're going to be getting rid of many of their playing staff. Uh, this is a sort of rough translation. It says, as of today, the management of Malaga has communicated to the professional footballers, the professional footballers and staff its intention to initiate a, quote, collective dismissal procedure. Um, 
They are effectively restructuring the squad, uh, restructuring the first team to try and save their club. Uh, you were talking about it before we started recording about how much they've fallen in, in recent years and months and what have you. Uh, really sad times. Never good to see a, a once great football club going through something like this. No, no, it's very much um, when you look at I, I, maybe a decade or so ago and they had a, a big load of investment and it looked like Malaga were going to be one of those big breakthrough teams where, not to the level of a Manchester City, but where it's one of the, the teams that isn't the big dog of the league, in, in this case of Barcelona or Real Madrid or Atletico Madrid or even Valencia at that time. But it was one of those relatively smaller sides in, in that division who have just had a load of money piled into him. And you're thinking, this is it, they're, they're going to take that next step. And whereas something like Manchester City obviously did that, um, and I'm not saying Malaga had anywhere near that, that level of investment, but the Malaga experiment didn't really work. Um, the Manuel Pellegrini as manager, um, they, they made big signings like Joaquin, which was just a, a thing of beauty. Uh, we were waxing lyrical mm -hmm. him before he started this. What a footballer! But they went out and they made some big money signings, and then the bubble kind of burst. I, I guess a um, a more realistic comparison might be the, the example of Monaco um, when mm -hmm. they had investment, uh, and you're thinking, right, that's it. They're, they're going to get well. They, and Monaco, they, they did. They, they got themselves a league and title. They it looked well. They, they did very well in Champions League. At, at times, um, and then the wheels started to come off, and the investment wasn't there, and they were having to sell any assets that they do have. Um, and then Monaco ended up nearly getting relegated um, a couple of seasons ago, and, and still they're not they're nowhere near where they were. And with the Malaga example, yeah, it's very much like that. It's just they, they've had this this chance where this riches has come in, not really worked out, and now you fast forward years later, and then in this horrible predicament where. I mean, thankfully, in one way, it looks like they're still going to have a football club. But what sort of football club do you have when you have no players and no staff? It's it's uh, an awful situation for, for everyone involved there. Yeah, horrible to read about that. But uh, let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Uh, and subscribe to What Culture Football, wherever you get your podcasts from, for daily football podcasts when you're out and about on the go. You can also continue the conversation with us on Twitter at What Culture FC. And watch it there, follow both of us. You can follow Andrew Pollard at Culture Left Pack. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture FC, as I said. But for now, this has been today's football news. My thanks to Andrew Pollard. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you soon.